Hey guys, this is video 14.4. In this video, we're gonna talk about half reactions. We're gonna talk about what they are and how to write them. All right, so this is where <clears throat> um, knowing oxidation numbers, being able to write those and being able to identify that you know what's being oxidized and what's being reduced is gonna come in handy. Okay, so you've gotta make sure you know that stuff before we get here. So remember, right, our little saying, Leo the lion, says ger okay i'm going to capitalize these right lose electrons oxidize gain electrons reduce so what half reactions allow us to show is the exchange of electrons in a re in a chemical reaction okay in a redox reaction up until this point guys we know or have studied hey electrons are being moved around um, but we haven't really shown that anyway. We haven't looked at those individually. We just know in our back of our minds, hey, electrons are being transferred or they're being shared. So now we're going to see, well, what's really happening to them? How are they really, um, you know, where are they being lost? Where are they being gained? So for each redox reaction, we can illustrate two half reactions. Guys, I guarantee you that you will have to write a half two, like a set of half reactions on your regions exam. They always, always, always ask you to do that. So whether it's multiple choice or short answer, most likely it's going to be short answer where you have to write half reactions. Make sure you know how to do this. Okay. So again, like in 14.2, I said, Hey, make sure you take a day to kind of practice this. This is something else you need to practice. I have lots and lots of practice because this is such a hot topic. Um, um, that they put on the region, so make sure you can do this very well and that you're not struggling taking 10 minutes to try and do it. All right, one half reaction is going to show us oxidation, and then the other one obviously is going to show us reduction. Okay, so here's an example of a reduction half reaction. All right, we have um, iron plus three electrons <clears throat> is going to yield um, iron three ion okay so what we can see what we should know for this is that we have electrons on the left side which means since they're on the left side as a reactant guys they are gained in the reaction all right so think ger okay <clears throat> and there is a typo here i need you guys to change this because it doesn't make sense that we're gaining and we're reducing. So this is what it needs to be. I thought I had mixed, fixed it, but I didn't. So cross out the charge guys on the right side and then put <clears throat> the three plus there because otherwise, hey, if we're gaining electrons, we need to be reducing our charge. Well, <clears throat> the way it was written, we weren't reducing it, okay? So notice now with that correction, the charge um, for iron goes down left to right, which this shows us that reduction that's taking place. And again, why does the charge go down? The charge decreases or goes down because <clears throat> iron gained those electrons. That's the key, okay? Gain electrons, our charge needs to reduce. So it didn't make sense with that mistake that was in there that you know that it would actually reduce because the charge wasn't decreasing. On the other side, okay, notice, so one thing to point out, reduction half reactions, I'm gonna circle it in red. Electrons, guys, are on the left side. Okay, you're gaining them, they have to be as a reactant because you're gaining them. Oxidation, though, look where our electrons are. They are a product, okay? So oxidation, your electrons are being lost, they're gonna be on the product side. Um, reduction, they're being gained, so they're a reactant. So right here, electrons on the left side. Are lost. Oops, not lose, lost in the reaction. Hence, Leo, okay, <clears throat> notice here, the charge on iron goes up on, from the left side to the right side. So from the reactants to the products, our charge goes up. This means that oxidation is occurring. 
and I can't spell today. Charge goes up because electrons, because iron lost electrons, okay? So you've got to be able to know what oxidation reduction mean, guys. Remember, Leo the Lion says, girl, I know it's a little corny, it's a little cheesy, but write it on your test, write it on your quiz, write it in your reference table to help you remember that because it's going to help you out a lot. Notice, guys, we always add electrons to the side of the reaction that has a higher total charge. <clears throat> Remember, electrons are negative. Okay, so they're helping to balance it out. This is the law of conservation of mass and charge. Okay, so what I mean by, notice the higher charge guys in the oxidation half reaction, right? We have a plus three, that means the electrons are with the plus. Up here, the electrons are also with the plus after we made that correction, okay? Following the law of conservation <clears throat> of charge. So half reactions follow the law of conservation of mass as well. Okay, this means that there must be the same number of atoms on both sides of the reaction. So not only are they following the law of conservation of charge, so you've got to have charges neutralized or balanced out on both sides, but it's also law of conservation of mass. So we've done this already, we've balanced reactions. We got to keep that in mind as we go through these half reactions, that everything in the end has to be balanced, okay? So, <clears throat> like we just said, there must also be a conservation of charge that takes place in the half reactions because the net the net charge must be the same on both sides okay although it doesn't need to be zero it just has to be the same Okay, so like with um, oxidation numbers, guys, we have rules for setting up half reactions. First step, assign those oxidation numbers. This whole idea, guys, of drawing brackets, we don't need, you don't need to worry about it. if it helps you. You're, I'm not going to necessarily do that. The brackets are shown here, okay, showing what's doing it so you can identify oxidation and reduction. Then you're going to begin to set up the half reactions. Pull out the brackets, bring in the element symbol and assign charge with you. Set up a reaction with the arrow connecting the two sides. Only trick, diatomics must be pulled out as a pair. The only time you ever bring subscripts with you. That's a big topic here, guys, something to remember. Diatomics is the only time you bring a subscript with you in a half reaction. Okay, only diatomics. Um, <clears throat> step four. Okay, for reactions involving diatomics, balance the mass first. Okay, then balance the charge with those electrons on both sides. So save the electrons until the end, get everything balanced with in terms of um, mass first, and then save charge till the end. So here we go. Let's jump in and do an example together. You have these here. I'm not going to spend the time reading them to you. You guys can read them yourselves. So what we've done already is we have noticed, okay, well, what's going on? So magnesium here was a zero. Zinc is a plus two, chlorine's a minus one. Magnesium here is a plus two, chlorine's still a minus one, and zinc is zero. So we've drawn brackets, guys, the red brackets, showing, okay, which one's which. So now identify which one's oxidized, which one's reducing. Magnesium, guys, is going to be oxidized. Zinc is going to be reduced. So now we can go ahead and start writing our half reactions, okay? So what I, type, what I tend to do is, okay, well, write down what we know first. So magnesium, you don't have to necessarily put the charges with it. It can help you, but later on you'll probably kind of lose that when they're zero. If they have a charge, they have to have a charge. But if it's zero, you don't necessarily have to write zero there. So now, what did magnesium become? Well, magnesium, we had one of them in our reaction, so we only need one. And that now is an ion. It has a two plus charge. Okay, so notice here our atoms, our masses are balanced. We had one on each side. Now we've got to take care of the electrons. Well, think about this has got a plus two charge, so how many electrons am I going to need to balance that plus two charge? I would need two electrons because there's, they're negative, so I need two negative charges to balance out my positive two. So this is going to be my half reaction for the oxidation reaction. 
okay? Notice how, again, oxidation, lose electrons. The electrons are on the product side, not the reactant side, because we lost them. All right, now on the flip side, let's talk about zinc, right? Zinc started with a plus two charge, and it ended up with a charge of zero. Well, how do I go from a plus two to a zero? I have to gain electrons, and that's why they're set up here. Okay, so we're gaining the electrons, so they're gonna be on the reactant side. Well, think again, how many electrons do I need to balance out that plus two charge? Well, I'm gonna need two electrons. Note, guys, you have the oxidation, half re the oxidation and the reduction half reactions. They're simultaneous, remember? They're mutual. So however many electrons you're gonna lose, or one atom's gonna lose, the other one's gonna gain. So our numbers of electrons here should be equal to each other. Okay, the number of electrons you have on the product side, so in the oxidation reaction, should equal the number of electrons you have on the reactant side in the reduction reaction. Okay, that's that conservation of charge. So, that's our first example. Let's move on. Let's do another few together. Okay, <clears throat> example number two. Now we're going to have to deal with masses. So, things we've already done. So, again, the brackets match up the elements that you know are going to change. So, write your oxidation numbers first. These both have zero because they're by themselves. Now, mercury is a plus one, iodine's a minus one. Okay, so again, identify what's oxidizing, what's reducing. Leo, lose electrons, oxidize. Oh, mercury's doing that. Oops, not Leo, sorry. Oxidation. Iodine is going to be reduced. Okay, so. Start with my oxidation half reactions first. I've got mercury. That's going to become mercury one plus, and it's got one electron. Okay. Now, this is where things get a little bit more dicey. Reduction. Okay, reduction is happening. <clears throat> we have I2 to start. We end up with I minus one. Guys, is that balanced? No, we've got to make sure we balance that out. Okay, so think about this now. How many electrons do I need to actually get that reduction to happen? Okay, this is where things get a little bit challenging here. Okay, it should be, well, two times negative one. We're actually going to need two electrons. Okay, so just for the sake of balancing the masses, we're going to leave this like so. Okay, the, the masses are balanced. We're gonna come back to this problem in a second because some of you might be thinking, hey, something's wrong here. Okay, and there is something wrong. We're not finished with it. But let's jump down to this next one. Well, let's just finish this one actually while we're at it, sorry. Um, so what is wrong with this? We just talked about it in the last one, right? The number of electrons have to be equal. Okay, well, how are we gonna do that? You might be thinking, okay, if I just look back up here and I balance my reaction first, that's what we need. We need those two. So really, we have two atoms of mercury on both sides, which that's where we're going to get that two electrons from. So again, maybe, and we've done this already, guys, make sure your original reaction is balanced first, then start going through and writing your half reaction. There's multiple ways you can do this. You can save it till the end. It might be more erasing, okay, and use a pencil when you're doing this. But... Um, Find the way that works for you. There's always multiple ways. All right, last example we're going to do together, then you guys can practice on your own. Let's start with making sure everything's balanced first, okay? So copper, there's one on each side. I need two here for the two nitrates, and I need two silvers. Okay, now I'm going to go through and figure out my charges. Copper's got a zero. Silver's got a plus one. This whole nitrate's a minus one. Copper's a plus two. Nitrate's a minus one. Silver's a, a zero, excuse me here because it's by itself. All right, so we drew our brackets. Copper is getting something changing with its charge, and so is silver. Silver is being reduced. Copper is being oxidized. Okay, so let's do our oxidation half reaction. It doesn't matter which one you do first, oxidation or reduction. Just pick one. All right, so copper is being oxidized, so it's becoming copper 2 plus. How many electrons is that going to need? It's going to need two electrons. My reduction that's taking place, now since we already balanced it, guys, let's bring that all down. We had two silver ions on the left, and we have two silver atoms on the right. How many electrons are we going to need? Because think about it like this, right? This coefficient distributes out. So really, I have a total charge of plus two that needs to be balanced out with electrons. So I'm going to need two 
electrons to balance that out. Okay, and that's what's showing down here. Okay, we can see that, oh, we're trying to get that all balanced out right here. So you guys can just ignore this part because we just talked through it. Okay, now this is something that's going to take practice. Take it your time, take a day or so to really make sure you understand this. If you have questions, if I went too quickly for you, pause, go back and rewatch, call me over. All right, there's lots and lots of extra practice in the binder as well. Until next time, I'll see you later.